The third release in Lionsgate's Vestron Video Revival series is Waxwork, which is the first actual Vestron Pictures release of the bunch. The first two were from sub-labels of Vestron or other related companies. Anyway, OCD, doesn't matter. Waxwork. The first thing you notice about Waxwork is the cast listing at the start of the film, where names you know and love from all kinds of genre favorites just keep coming at you one at a time. It's a fantastic group of actors, and with that, I was all in on Waxwork. Waxwork features a group of seriously out-of-time kids, including Zach Galligan, Deborah Foreman, and Baby Bobby Briggs, who visit a mysterious local wax museum run by David Warner. Turns out that the museum houses portals to other worlds, the ones depicted in each display, and soon all the weird modern film noir kids are in danger. Who put the acid in my drink again, China? Waxwork was director Anthony Hickox's first film, and it was written in three days in order to get the production started. So while you can kind of tell it was written in one big marathon session, it's also surprisingly inventive for something rushed to market, and from someone who'd never made a feature film. Hickox says he was inspired by Hammer Horror films, but noted that it was only the last 10 minutes of those films that were really memorable. And so he thought, what if there was a movie where those last 10 minutes happened several times throughout the course of the film? That gives Waxwork an oddly unique structure. Sometimes, someone who's never done any of this before can make all the right choices, no matter how crazy, and come away with a successful debut. Waxwork features a ton of special effects work, some of which is great and some merely serviceable. But even when an effect is substandard, it's masked well. And by the time we get to the finale of the film, things get absolutely nuts. It's one of the most chaotic, inspired horror finales I've seen in some time. So yeah, Waxwork is a lot of fun and definitely worth a look. The new Vestron Video Blu-ray for Waxwork features a decent amount of supplemental material. Included on the disc is a 24-minute vintage featurette cleverly called The Making of Waxwork, which is hosted by co-star Patrick McNee. It's a good look at all the behind-the-scenes stuff you want and has interviews with most of the cast members from during the film's production. I'll talk about the rest of the extras in a few, because first we should talk about Waxwork 2 Lost in Time, which is also included in this Blu-ray release. This sequel starts seconds after the first film ends, although Deborah Foreman has been recast because she was dating director Anthony Hickox during the making of the first film and was no longer dating him at this time. That character is on trial for the death of her stepfather at the hands of, well, a uh, hand, and Zach Galligan decides the only way to prove her innocence is to find evidence of the waxwork, which of course burned down at the end of the first film. He visits Patrick McNee's house and finds a recording of him explaining what to do now that he's dead, and that involves some kind of amulet that will allow them to bounce around in time. So it's an interesting premise, but it quickly becomes total nonsense, as they aren't bouncing around in time necessarily, but through a bunch of movies that Anthony Hickox likes. So there are bits from Alien, which features Maxwell Caulfield, The Haunting with Bruce Campbell and Counselor Troy, and a very lengthy segment during Medieval Times where the main characters are being bothered by Alexander Gudnoff. While bolstered by a cast that's speaking directly to my interests, sadly I just don't like Waxwork 2 as much as I do the first one. Removing the whole guise of the waxwork and just touching a necklace to end up somewhere else isn't as interesting. The first film had rules and played by them. This one is literally just a series of vignettes. It's fine, but it's just not as clever as the first film. Typically, you want to outdo your original, not cut corners, although I understand that this was made for a lot less money than Waxwork, so I get it. Also, they bounce into a Godzilla movie at one point, and it'll make you cringe. Oh no! Point, though, for the completely out-of-nowhere early 90s rap that plays over the closing credits, which qualifies for a Stargrove Award. Okay, back to the extra features. I held off on talking about the new content because the six featurettes on the Waxwork disc wander back and forth talking about both films. It's interesting how Hickox has vivid memories of the first film, but doesn't remember much about the second. I guess your debut film really sticks with you. Anyway, just about everyone you can think of participates, except for Deborah Foreman, sadly. The best story, though, comes from J. Martin Campbell, who plays the Marquis de Sade in the first film, talking about reluctantly being at a sex party and getting recognized as his character, which made him quite popular for the rest of the evening. No one mentions that rap video, sadly, but it does come up during the Waxwork 2 commentary. 
Hickox and star Zach Galligan have a track on both films, and you can tell they've been good friends over the years. Both tracks are worth a listen. Waxwork is a definite recommendation, and you'll probably want to watch Waxwork 2 as well, even though I'm not as high on it. Treat it like an extra feature on this sweet Blu-ray set, though, and it should be fine. 